Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy Oreo Man 555 and welcome to part 2 of the verified comment botting iceberg. I was originally not really going to make a part 2. I was working on the Jake Paul and YouTube boxing iceberg and the history of chess video. Those were the top two voted on the community post, but I got a lot of good responses in the comment section on part 1. So I figured I would make a follow-up and basically answer every single question. You don't really need to watch part 1, but if you do so, I'll link it in the description but anyways in part two we're going to discuss various other issues such as how this affects the youtube community in the non-english language speaking genre and how this affects um hacked channels because not all of these channels have been botted or falsely collected some of them have actually been hacked by real people so starting off with the tip we have of course hacked channels and channels that have falsely been taken away from the original owner this is at the tip because channel hacking is a lot different from what these verified bots are doing these guys are falsely collecting these channels from the original owners essentially stripping away all of their progress and actual success so essentially how to avoid this is simple be aware of who manages your channel and also keep your passwords a secret this is why kai weiss after being exposed and self-terminating his channel was able to delete omnia's channel as well because omnia had falsely trusted him into giving him all the account information so because he had the username and password all he had to do was log in and terminate the account removing all of her success now, when it comes to the short hack situation, there are a lot of other videos out there that have discussed the issue of it, so I'm going to briefly explain what exactly happened. So short hacks had a person on Discord DM him, basically saying, yo, I will become your editor for free. So obviously short hacks was of course, you know, in a pinch. So he did what he said and he made him the editor. Now, channel management isn't necessarily a bad thing. I myself have my own parents as channel managers because they keep track of the revenue and whatever this channel makes because of course i am under 18 so they manage that aside from your parents or family members you shouldn't trust anyone else with this amount of power because although they cannot delete videos they have the power to unlist and do various other things to your channel they can change the video's home page, they can change the description of your channel, they can change the watermark of your profile picture, and they can basically ruin your reputation and your progress of the channel. Now, since we've gone over the process of the hacking in the US and the English speaking genre, I want to discuss how it happens worldwide and with different language speaking channels. So a good example of this is a channel called Ramsey Steung Sen. Now do not go and spam report or send hate to this channel channel in case they get it back. So this channel had a history of uploading calmer language short films that actually got really good views and had gotten viral. Most of their short films would always get more views than the amount of subscribers that this channel had, so it would make no sense why they would ever sell their channel to anyone else on the platform, meaning that they must have gotten hacked. On majority of their short films before they had gotten hacked, the commenters were always in the same language or the same country. Meaning that all of a sudden, they must have gotten hacked because even 9 months ago, their community posts included the basic videos telling people to go watch them. To all of a sudden, Mobile Legends gameplay, which can't even rack 200 views, which is honestly just extremely suspicious and definitely states that this channel has been hacked. Ultimately, if your YouTube channel is about as precious as a baby, obviously keep it safe. Don't share it to anyone who you don't trust. Now, moving on to the next part, we have, of course, the verified commenters that just spam and leech off of other people's hard work. Their only real method of being relevant is just dogging on other creators' hard work and basically farming clout off of simple drama like this. These verified comment bots do it because they know if they were to start from zero, they simply are just too lazy or just don't actually want to start from zero. So by buying the channel, they quote unquote give themselves a head start into YouTube success, which is basically just a way for them to cheat on the platform. What you as the viewer can do is pretty simple. Always report these channels and make sure to tell other people about them and make sure you hit their comments with a dislike so that way they get pushed down to the bottom. What you as the verified creator can do or the content creator yourself can do is always make sure you shadow ban or block these channels from commenting on your videos. It's pretty simple. What you can do is if you're ever browsing YouTube on your phone, all you have to do is tap on the channel, go to the thing with the three circles, and then there's gonna be an option called block channel 
when you click on the block channel button, this channel is now forbidden from commenting on any of your videos or anywhere on your YouTube homepage, whether it be community posts or the discussion tab. Now, if you think YouTubers copying comments and gaining attention from that is pathetic, meet Lonely Sandwich. He takes the copying to another level, like legitimately A4 style level. Like this is Stokes Twins level of copying. Now, unlike the other verified spam bot commenters, Lonely Sandwich is growth on Social Blade and on analytics is actually genuine. This guy has legitimate growth and can actually back up the subscribers and viewers gained, unlike the other verified bots who have random spikes and dips. So you might be wondering, well, what makes Lonely Sandwich so bad that he's worse than all of the other guys? Well, what if I told you he not only copies titles, he copies thumbnails and portions of popular videos? I'll explain. So there's this genius channel called I'm Watching You with 1.64 million subscribers. They upload a video called Don't Close Your Mouth While Watching This. It's a pretty genius idea. It forces the person to stay throughout the whole video. So obviously it went viral, 9.2 million views. So Lonely Sandwich, see this he decides to come in and he basically creates a video called don't close your mouth while watching this now if we put the two videos together you'll see that this video is not only copying the title the thumbnail and pretty much majority of the built-up concept the only difference truly is the red text and the font that's the only different thing so when putting the two videos together, it seems like it's a pretty different concept. I mean, aside from the idea, it's not like Lonely Sandwich is splicing uh, I'm watching these clips together. So I personally have no clue why he would ruin his reputation like this. Like, why would you go out of your way to copy comments and video ideas? Like, your channel is not even botted in any way, so why would you do this? Ultimately, Lonely Sandwich, I guess you could say, is currently having his karma as via Social Blade. He's currently losing engagement and subscribers. So I guess you could say that's kind of karma in, in a sense. Now, for the last part, we're going to talk about what YouTube headquarters themselves can do about this issue. So this is the part where I'm going to ask you guys to spread the word and share this message. Because obviously, if it doesn't really gain any traction, YouTube's just going to sweep it under the rug like they always do. Now, this part is in no way, shape, or form meant to hate on YouTube or manage to spread negativity towards their platform. I think this is more of a situation where YouTube was just trying to be nice to creators, but unfortunately, it's led to other people just taking advantage of YouTube's generosity. So YouTube in no way is the problem. This problem has been indirectly caused by YouTube trying to be nice to verified creators and the people who put the time and the effort to reach 100k plus subscribers. Not only that, but it's always nice as a non-verified creator who's still trying to grow on the platform to have a verified person come and tell you that your content was good, or it's always nice to add a sympathy of trust when a verified creator calls out another person for spreading misinformation and false accusations on the platform. I bring this up because in no way, shape, or form am I trying to chastise or bash YouTube headquarters. This in the sense is more of other creators taking advantage of YouTube being nice in a sense. What YouTube can first do is make sure that if you turn off your subscribers or change your profile picture, you lose verification. It's that simple. This would stop the Mr. Beast spam verified commenters in the comment section and would eventually end their rage of them basically falsifying trust between their audience. Because when it comes to the Mr. Beast verified profile pictures, you know the only people they're actually fooling are little kids because there's no way, shape, or form an adult would actually fall for this. The next thing that YouTube can essentially do is make it so verified check marks and music badges are irrelevant and arbitrary in the comment section. Ever since 2018, that YouTube has made it very clear that subscribers and subscriber counts said, are arbitrary and they mean nothing. Year. This in a sense is good because it helps people who are new to the platform gain recognition and also become viral without having any previous subscribers. It also helps give a chance for people to evolve and change and become better versions of themselves. A good example is a YouTuber like Dream. He started with a thousand subscribers, but due to YouTube's new algorithm, subscribers did not matter anymore. He went from a thousand to about blowing up to almost 28 million subscribers so ultimately this means that why can't youtube show that same respect in the comment section subscribers should be irrelevant in all areas of youtube 
Don't push people to the top just because they have a check mark or a music badge. You should make it equal in the commenting genre. Doing this would essentially prevent the spam and the verified comment botting issue because then people wouldn't have a reason to do this anymore because just being verified wouldn't push you to the top and gain you likes anymore. It's kind of embarrassing that YouTube's team isn't doing this, but for some reason they have the time to comment on trending videos of the creators that they've grown while the verified comment bots themselves show up in the same exact video. Like YouTube, what are y'all doing? Like you have time to comment on trending videos, but you can't flag or shadow ban these people that are blatantly clout chasing off of people in the comment section. Like that's just like, what? Lastly, as stated in the previous video, some of the channels have stupidly self-snitched themselves into admitting that they've bought the channel in order to circumvent the YouTube partner program method of approval. Because essentially what these channels are now doing is they're extorting false money from this company. So YouTube in a sense should care because these channels are basically scamming your hard earned revenue from you guys. So essentially YouTube should do something against this and terminate these guys. So ultimately, that's going to end this rant. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, be prepared for the Jake Paul and the YouTube boxing iceberg and the history of chess video. It's going to be epic. So thank you guys for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe. Thank you so much.